just washing your face. Yeah, these are the wipe and clear lens wipes. I get these at Costco. I mean, I got them once, but you know Costco, you get like a massive supply of them. They're really good for lens cleaning. I'm just about finished with the Hello Mermaid flavor and I recently ordered grape flavor, woohoo! Still loving this bad boy as my urea cream. I alternate this Eustrin one. I was watching a YouTube video this morning and a commercial came on and it was a theme song to The Sopranos and it's going through my head. Woke up this morning. That was a good show, man. Check out the dew. <laughs> Just finished getting ready. Speaking of moisture, I've got that Hydro Boost Hydrating Lip Shine Radiant Rose on my lips, but I wanna get some other shades. I have to do these online tests every quarter. I mentioned this in my video explaining what board certification means, but I was doing one of them and there were some questions that corresponded to an article all about allergic contact dermatitis on the lips. One common allergen, oxybenzone or benzophenone, in terms of sunscreen allergy, that has to be the most common allergen in sunscreens aside from fragrance and other additives. But as far as the actual sunscreen ingredients, oxybenzone is common, which are often present in a lot of lip products. Fragrance is also a common cause, as are like certain uh, preservatives, something called gallates, which are in a lot of lipsticks, G-A-L-L-A-T-E. Anyways, I am gonna whip up my AG1. Woo, that is bright. I have the ring light on over here. I'm gonna whip up my AG1. It is a dreary day, so I'm gonna get that in. Love having that every morning. It's just part of my routine, as you guys know. And today's video is in partnership with AG1. If you're not familiar, AG1, it's my like multi, oops, you almost fell there. It's my multivitamin drink. Uh, instead of taking a multivitamin, I have this uh, AG1. It's basically a, all-in-one nutritional drink, if you will. 75 vitamins and minerals, whole food source. It's vegan, no sugar, keto-friendly, paleo-friendly, free of common allergens like nuts. I typically have it first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. The reason I keep coming back to AG1 is it tastes really good. It has like a vanilla pineapple-y taste to it. And I also like that it dissolves really easily in water. It's not clumpy. It doesn't leave like a clump of sediment at the bottom of the bottle. I hate that. Like you think that the product has been ev evenly like dissolved and you get down to the bottom and it's like a big clump. Yeah, this doesn't do that. As you all know, I am a creature of habit. I really like carving out just little routines. I feel as though it helps me stay on track with my goals and whatnot. I have things that I look forward to and that are habitual. Now, here's what the powder looks like. If you can see in there, ooh, it's green. But I, I just find that when I have little habits, things that I look forward to, it helps me manage my stress overall to just be in like a little routine. So I just do one scoop. Speaking of routine, you know, I follow a vegan diet, so I need to take B12, and I can easily forget to take that in pill form, or I was doing those little droplets for a time, but I've been super consistent with this because I just look forward to it, you know, it's like part of my daily routine. Ah, it's so smooth too. It doesn't have any grittiness or anything. This is a supplement, so make sure and discuss with your healthcare provider if this is right for you, especially if you're pregnant or breastfeeding. Uh, but I, I mean, it's totally replaced my multivitamin that I was taking before. AG1 is a great option for people who like struggle to get much variety in their diet, miss out on nutrients. It just kind of helps bridge those gaps. AG1 is NSF certified for sport. That is the certification that professional athletes have to adhere to in terms of their supplements. It's made in a TGA registered facility in New Zealand. It's a really great product and I stand by it. They're really rigorous in terms of the quality of their ingredients. Make sure you take advantage of my link in the description box because my offer for a free gift is still standing. If you click the link in my description box, you will get a free bottle of their vitamin D3 plus K2, that dropper bottle, it's a year's worth of vitamin D plus 
five free travel packets with your first order. So go ahead and snag that free gift if you've been wanting to try it out by clicking the link in my description box. It will be down below. So right now there are a ton of mosquitoes out and about. One thing that I wanted to remind you guys, when it comes to uh, mosquito repellent, insect repellent, don't buy the products that are a combination of insect repellent plus sunscreen. Those aren't good. The reason is that you need to be reapplying sunscreen a lot more frequently than you need to reapply uh, insect repellent, like DEET. Insect repellent, you're gonna reapply it based on the instructions because it's gonna vary depending on the concentration and the formulation of the product overall. Whereas sunscreen, you're gonna to wanna to reapply every two hours while you're outside, as well as when you get out of the water, uh, if you've been particularly sweaty. So it's gonna be a lot more frequent, most likely. And you also don't wanna spray insect repellent on your face. So it's better to have separate products. In fact, there's always been a push to pressure the FDA to kind of do, away, do away with those combination products because they're just confusing. Speaking of insects and my vibrant lip color, did you know that when it comes to mosquitoes, dark fabrics, like this black hoodie that I'm wearing, brought to you by the kind people at YouTube gifted me this. Anyways, um, mosquitoes are attracted to dark fabric. So it's really popular in the South to wear bright colors. I think people there in the South just like that. But an added benefit is that it repels mosquitoes, like the Lily Pulitzer kind of fabrics. Mosquitoes are less attracted to those fabrics. They like dark fabrics because they think it's like a dark environment where they can go and lay their eggs or whatever. I don't know, I'm not a mosquito. But so far, I've been pretty lucky in, av in avoiding mosquito bites. And fortunately, I've been uh, lucky to not encounter, we have these caterpillars here. It's called the puss caterpillar. <laughs> it looks like a big hairball. They call them asps. If you touch one of those, they like cause a stinging uh, railroad track type uh, painful rash, miserable. So if you ever see something that looks like this, don't touch it and keep your animals away from that. Yeah, we have those here in Texas. They call them asps, but it's the puss moth, P-U-S-S moth. I don't know where they came up with the name asps. And I just had a thought. I saw in New Beauty Magazine, they have their like best of. Anyways, apparently EOS came out with an SPF lip balm. It has like pineapple fruit extract and a bunch of other flavorants in it. But I was wondering if they might have it here. They actually have a pretty good lineup of minis. Little mini calm and restore. Ugh. I like this Walgreens because it's never too crowded. What do they have here as far as a van? This is a good lip balm. This new scar gel. Zinc. That is good for healing. Anti inflammatory. Hmm. Their cleansing gel. I really like this product. Their mineral compact. What's Physio Lift Eyes? Wrinkles, puffiness, dark circles. Hyaluronic acid and retinaldehyde. Retinaldehyde is one step towards retinoic acid as opposed to retinol is two steps. This looks promising as a topical vitamin A for around the eyes. I don't know about improving dark under eye circles. People get their hopes up way too much for improving dark circles. Aside from concealer, products really aren't going to address that because dark circles, they're a result of just kind of the anatomy of the eye socket, the hollows under the eyes. And then with age, you get migration of fat and bone resorption that exacerbates the appearance of hollows. And I mean, unless you have pigmentary alteration there, a lot of products are not really gonna do much. These Hemp's body moisturizers, I have to admit, are very nice. I have a sensitive skin one. The other day when I was in Target, I saw Neutrogena came out with these 
matte CC creams. They don't have sunscreen in them, but otherwise they look pretty good. They have niacinamide, which is helpful for redness and hyperpigmentation. So I think they would be a good option for people over to put over sunscreen as like a cosmetic camouflage to protect against dark spots. And I like that they have a relatively decent spectrum of shades. Oh, score. This is $2 off. $2 off on two with coupon. Oh, I need a new one of these already. I'm already almost finished with mine. What's this new lip plumping serum? Peptides. These things sometimes can be just irritants the lip plumpers. This I've been so happy with. I kind of want to get another one. This is the shade I currently have. Radiant Rose. But they also have Soft Blush. I think that would look kind of odd. What about Pink sorbet. That might be fun for summer. Ballet pink. These are also really good. The SPF 20. The packaging is kind of weird, however, and they're not broad spectrum. They're like decently moisturizing. And they stay on pretty well, and they give just a nice sheer tint, as the name implies. I'm not falling for Sally Hansen's seasonal collaborations with candy brands again. <laughs> Remember around Halloween, I went berserk with the Sally Hansen's collaboration with Sour Patch Kids, the Halloween colors. The Peeps collaboration, those are cute colors. This looks like it would be miserable to get off, though, that chunky glitter. But I do like this color. Well, hey guys, I just popped out of the shower and feeling good. I wanted to update you all on this Xeroid Rachinic, Rachinic Urea Cream. I just ordered another tube of this because I've been loving it that much. I contemplated ordering another tube of the Eucerin Urea. I was going back and forth because I really like both of these. This is what I'm putting on my face as like basically my daily moisturizer, face, neck. And I've been super happy with both of them, honestly. Um, but for a while, this one was out of stock on Amazon. That's where I get it from. I, you might be able to get it from like Stylevana or even YesStyle. I'm not sure. Anyways, I went ahead and reordered it and just decided to hold off on getting another Eucerin. I'll finish the Eucerin up. I'm almost finished with the Xeroid one. I'm almost finished with the Eucerin one. Once I finish those, the other one should be here and I'll probably resume with that. But I have been really enjoying these Urea facial moisturizers. You know, Urea... It is an amazing underrated ingredient. Hydrating, helps soften built up dry skin cells, helps even with a little bit of pore clogging issues. I mentioned this before, but I definitely think it helps with sebaceous filaments, because think about it, it's a hydrating ingredient, helps plump up the skin cells, but it also helps break up sticky shedding cellular matter as what is being extruded from your pores where you see that little keratin-like filament of the sebaceous filament. It's basically a mixture of oil, dead skin cells, and maybe some bacteria. Yeek! Not, not like deadly bacteria, like normal face bacteria. You know, bacteria, they're not all bad. You've got good bacteria on your skin. They're not all bad. And even the acne-causing bacterium, cutie bacterium acnes, you know, for the most part, it's just part of normal skin flora. It's like chilling in there, not a problem. Obviously, it's probably there for a reason down in our pores. You know, some people, gosh, I am really going on a tangent. I started here just telling you I reordered a urea cream, and next thing we know, we're going down, talking about different strains of acne-causing bacteria. But people with acne, there is actually a separate strain of cutie bacterium acnes that people with acne are more inclined to have may be more likely to be inflammatory. Um, so yeah, all that to say that urea is 
a beneficial ingredient for just kind of helping the skin cell turnover. You know, those skin cells that get sticky, and that's what can contribute to the clogging the pores. And that bacteria is like, hey, and breaks down the components of the of the sebum, leads to inflammatory mediators, papules, pimples, the whole nine yards. Urea also helps to strengthen the skin barrier um, and help boost up your skin's it's, it's naturally present in your skin as a natural moisturizing factor now there are a lot of urea like i love urea as a foot cream but the concentration of urea and those types of products is quite high it would really be burning stinging and irritating on your face put a hemp flow the cetaphil rump and rump and bumpy <gasps> wow that sounded weird rough and bumpy this is a 20 percent urea cream Cream moisturizer. They don't even they don't even call it a cream or a lotion. They just call it a moisturizer. I like that. Um, this is great for rough and bumpy skin on the body. I would not put this on the face though, for sure. It would likely burn and sting. But I love using it. I get keratosis pilaris because hey, I got eczema, so they often go together. I get it on my arms a fair amount, and I don't know. In the past like three or four years. I don't know it suddenly appeared on the backs of my thighs <laughs> i don't know what that's all about but yeah i've got kp coming and going there from time to time too so this really helps me out a lot the skin smoothing cream was it by neostrata that was a really good one that really helped my kp out a lot as well and honestly there are some moisturizers out there that i end up using from time to time that don't have keratolytics and there's just something about them where it really helps out the kp for whatever reason for example the neutrogena hydro boost hydrating lotion i found that really helped out with kp quite a bit my earlobes are itchy man i'm telling you the pollen i hate to complain but it is like coating everything all of like my mucous membranes are just like <laughs> cannot handle it that is quite literally what it, what's going on like i i make this really annoying noise i haven't done it in years but when i was a child a teenager a tween if i got around certain allergens i would scratch the back of my throat and make this weird sound maybe you let me know in the comments if you do this i always thought it was like my superpower and people would be like what are you doing i do it in my i used to do it in my sleep i don't know if i still do that noise <laughs> sounds like a suckling pig. <laughs> yeah, um, when my allergies get up, I will do that from time to time. And I haven't, I don't think I've done it in a while, but I'll be darned. Sometimes when I'm filming sit down videos, I pause for a minute. I edit that out, but I'll pause. Like sometimes I have to say things a couple of times because they don't really come out clearly the first few times. Anyways, I've caught myself sitting there like looking over my notes on camera making that noise i'm like still doing it <laughs> anyways you guys urea is awesome the zeroid product i love this brand they make um a gel cream that is bomb too love it it's a korean brand anyways don't forget to check out ag1 uh and if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and as always don't forget sunscreen and subscribe i'll talk to you guys tomorrow bye